I probably look terrible, I've got a slight fever and my voice is not working with me today. So just bear with me. Today we're going to talk about cachexia. Now you've probably never ever heard of cachexia and just like with any other illness, if you haven't experienced it or someone you know hasn't experienced it, you'll never hear about that condition. So my uncle is struggling with cachexia at the moment and he's been struggling with uh, squamous cell carcinoma skin cancer for a while and he's undergone operations, he's had chemotherapy, he's had radiation and just when things were getting better he started developing cachexia. Now it started out as a little bit of muscle loss, you could see that he was losing weight but then he started getting thoracic outlet syndrome symptoms where he was struggling to keep his head up and he had compression down his arm and everything was burning and he had funny sensations down his arm and he couldn't keep his, his head up and his strap would tighten up. So I knew that he had some form of muscle loss and I was trying to keep it calm for him and massage him, loosening up his trap, um, loosening up his serratus anterior and putting a ball under his scapula when he lays just to get push on the scapula and pull his shoulders back. And that was helping for a while, but uh, that was probably the pre cachexia stage. Uh, now there's three stages to cachexia. You've got the pre cachexia stage where it's a total of about 5% body mass lost. And it's very difficult to determine where the pre cachexia starts and where the proper cachexia starts because it, it just flows into each other so quickly. So it was a matter of weeks that he had the neck pain and couldn't lift his head anymore to now where he has lost 40% of his total body mass, which is a significant amount and that's exactly what cachexia is. It's a muscle wasting disease. You just become anorexic. Um, it's classed as an irreversible disease and it's people that have HIV or AIDS, if you have kidney failure, heart failure, and especially cancer. Of the chemo and radiation, you've got a big chance of developing cachexia. So three stages, the pre cachexia is a total of 5% lost. Um, the full blown cachexia is obviously more um, body mass lost, loss of muscle, um, your appetite, changes completely you're never hungry and your metabolism changes so it's 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 working so hard and fighting that it's just using up all the resources in your body and because it changes your appetite you're not wanting to eat more um, it's very difficult because with cachexia even if you're eating more it doesn't mean that you're going to just pick up the weight but if you're not eating you're obviously going to deteriorate faster um, so then you get the refractory cachexia, which is more common with the cancer patients, and that's a loss of muscle, a loss of muscle function. That's where it becomes very tricky because you're moving less, which means your muscles are catabolic and they're just eating away. There's a lot more lactic acid from the muscle breakdown, and you're just in pain all the time. So that's exactly what my uncle is dealing with now, and he's in a lot of pain. Um, we've got the Cancer Association, we've got hospice helping, and it's just very difficult. So, there aren't a lot of treatments and there aren't a lot of options out there. But, I'll tell you everything that we are doing for him. And maybe you've dealt with somebody that had cachexia and maybe you've got a success story. Comment below and let me know. Because, what we are doing, we've got him on a special Ensure made for cancer patients to build him up. A lot of natural things like lemon water, warm lemon water to flush alkaline his body, just to help his body recover as much as it can. And uh, we've got a lot of juicing happening, a lot of fresh veggies and fruits, as much as he can take when he's hungry. We try to get him on an hourly schedule just to have something. And then we've also started him on Anavar. It was originally made in 1964, 1964. And it was used as a therapeutic aid for terminally ill men. It is also known as Oxandrolone, but the brand name is Anovar. This turns the cells from catabolic to anabolic. Catabolic where the muscles are breaking down, to anabolic where it's building up. So this was a very effective treatment throughout the years. And it only became mainstream in about the 1980s with uh, HIV patients. Um, it started, pre it prevented the muscle loss and muscle wasting. and. Today, if you say Anovar, you'll think bodybuilders because bodybuilders take Anovar to build muscle, obviously. The original function was to help terminally ill men. Uh, so we've done a lot of research, we've asked a lot of doctors, and it's a good treatment because that in combination with testosterone 
stops the muscles from breaking down further. So we have seen a small improvement in him over the weeks. He's been on it for about three weeks now. And it's not a quick fix, but at least it's, it's not br breaking down his muscles as quick as it was. So he's more stable now, but he has good days, he has bad days. And those extremely bad days are the days that he doesn't want to eat. And those days are definitely worse. When he gets some nutrients into him, um, he's got a lot more energy, he can sit up a little bit, and he's a lot more comfortable and talkative. Another thing with cachexia, a study that was done, where the severity of the cachexia and a person's hand strength determined how far they were. So, if you've lost like 40% of your body mass, you're extremely weak. But in the case of my uncle, he's still got such a strong grip, he's still got that hand strength, and that study determined that people with a strong hand strength had a better chance of recovery and maintaining a longer lifespan because of that inner strength. So if you've got no hand strength and you can't squeeze, it means you're extremely weak and it becomes more and more difficult to treat. So if you know of any doctors that are willing to help or you have any information that maybe I've missed or something that's helped somebody that you know, please comment down below and uh, yeah, let's get a conversation going and see how much information we can put together because it's only when a lot of information comes together that people's minds together start making solutions and that's exactly what I've done with thoracic outlet syndrome. I've helped so many people because I struggle with it and I didn't want to give up and just go down the same route as a lot of people go. They go to the, the wrong doctors um, and they never recover. I know that we can get somewhere with uh, the cachexia and cancer treatments and things just to help people that are struggling and just give them a little bit of hope as well. So you're not just laying there feeling hopeless and you, everything you read online is hopeless. Because even with TOS, reading everything online, you, you don't see a positive outcome. You see people lose years of their life and never feeling better. So this is one thing that I've been researching constantly and trying to find solutions and we, don't, we are literally trying everything we can to help him recover and help him feel better. So that's just a little insight on what cachexia is. Um, maybe you know of someone that's struggling and they don't know what's hap you don't know what's happening. They may be losing so much weight and nobody can determine what it is. At least now you can see that this is something you can take to the doctors and say maybe this is possibly cachexia. Maybe we can all put our heads together and come up with more solutions. So I hope this helped you and I'll see you guys soon.